Welcome to this decision tree tutorial for expected value of sample information. In this tutorial, we'll be constructing a decision tree with sample information. We will also be calculating the expected value of sample information. We will be using this payoff table where payoffs are profits. This is the decision tree for the payoff table. The expected value for stocks is calculated as 20.2. For mutual funds, it is 18.2, and for bonds, it is 20. The best of the expected values is 20.2, therefore the decision is to invest in stocks. Now, suppose there is an economic consultant that can provide additional information about the states of nature or outcomes, and this consultant has some success history. We now have an additional decision situation. Should we hire this consultant or not? If we don't hire the consultant, we will stick to our initial decision to invest in stocks. If we decide to hire the consultant, then we will consider two factors. Number one, how successful has the consultant's information been in the past? And number two, how much does it cost to hire the consultant? Here is a reduced version of our decision situation. Suppose if we hire the consultant, he or she could give a positive or a negative report about economic conditions. This report from additional information is often referred to as prediction, forecast, or result. Suppose the probability of the consultant giving a positive report is 0.44. This will mean that the probability of a negative report is 0.56. Since these are probabilities, we represent them using a chance node with positive and negative branches. Now suppose, given a positive report, the probability of a growing economy is 0.59 and the probability of growth given a negative report is 0.25. This means that the probability of decline given positive report is 1 minus 0.59 which is 0.41 and the probability of decline given negative report is 1 minus 0.25 which is 0.75. These probabilities are called posterior probabilities. We will discuss them in detail in the next video. So if the report is positive, we paste the original tree here with posterior probabilities 0.59 and 0.41. We do the same for negative report with probabilities 0.25 and 0.75. The chance nodes have now been labeled 1 to 5 for reference purposes as we calculate the expected values. The expected value for node 1 is 0.59 times 70 plus 0.41 times negative 13, which equals 35.9. In similar fashion, we calculate the expected value for node 2, for node 3, and for node 4. Now, if the report is positive, the best expected value is 35.97 from stocks. And if the consultant's report is negative, the best expected value is 20 from bonds. Next, we calculate the expected value for node 5, which is 0.44 times 35.97 plus 0.56 times 20, which gives 27.0268. The expected value of sample information estimates the value of information supplied by the consultant. Sample information is also known as imperfect information. So the expected value of sample information EVSI is calculated as EV with SI minus EV without SI. EV with SI is the expected value with sample information, that is, expected payoff if the consultant is hired without paying the consultant. EV without SI is the expected value without sample information that is the best expected payoff if the consultant is not hired. In this case, EV with SI is 27.0268 and EV without SI is 20.2. Therefore, EVSI is the difference between the two values which gives 6.8268. 
Now let's see how to use EVSI to determine the best decision strategy. Suppose the cost to hire the consultant is 7.2, which is higher than EVSI. That is, the fee is higher than the value added by the consultant. And so, the decision strategy will be not to hire the consultant. As a result, we will stick to our initial decision and invest in stocks. On another note, suppose the consultant's fee is 3.5, which is less than EVSI, then the strategy will be stated as follows. Hire the consultant. If the consultant's report is positive, invest in stocks. If the consultant's report is negative, invest in bonds. And that's how to calculate and use the EVSI to determine the best decision strategy. Please post your comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.